everybody. First of all, look at my shirt. <laughs> I'm sponsored. No, I'm just joking. I'm not. But I am currently repping my Strictly Series podcast shirt. This one is specifically Strictly JoJo, and I love it. I love how loud and red it is. If you are a fan of anime, or even specifically JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I highly recommend listening to their podcast. I will leave a link in the description if you are interested. It'll have their Instagram, the different areas that their podcast airs. I think it's Google, Spotify, and Apple. And I'll also have a link to their website. Shout out to all you anime fans out there. I will say that I don't think it's um, the best for children, so I guess keep that in mind when you are listening to the podcast. Okay, goals. Goal setting can be extremely overwhelming, and when it's not done right, it can make you feel even worse about yourself. So today, I am here to help you break down your long-term goals, and maybe even short-term goals, to make them more realistic and achievable. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will feel a lot more confident in your ability to achieve them too. So if you wanna know how to break down your goals, you have to know how to approach them. This is totally optional, and if you already use this, feel free to skip ahead. But when people are first starting out with making their goals, I do recommend using the SMART goal approach. And if you haven't heard of this before, it's simply just an acronym. It stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So S for specific. For a goal to be effective, it needs to be specific and detailed. Broad goals won't bring success because you can't exactly pinpoint the main purpose. So in this section, ask questions like, what objective needs to be accomplished? Who is responsible for it? And what steps will I take to achieve it? So an example, weight loss is a very common goal. And a lot of times I hear, I will lose a few pounds. That's pretty weak. So be specific and say, I will lose 10 pounds or I will weigh 100 120 pounds. M for measurable. How will you know that you're making progress towards your goal? Measurable goals are defined by precise times, amounts, or any kind of unit that clearly defines how far you've come and how far you have left to go. This will help you keep track of your pace along the way. It typically answers questions like how much or how many. So if we're gonna use that weight loss goal, the way that you can measure it would be by hopping on a scale. You can even, I guess, measure it by like the, the clothes that you're wearing and how they fit. A for achievable. Effective goals should be realistic to you and your ability at the time that you're making them. So consider your limitations and avoid making a goal that isn't really in your current reach. So going back to the example, if we're talking about weight loss, you maybe consider looking into your body mass index or your BMI and then compare that to your height. This will tell you if your goal is achievable. If I'm six foot five and I weigh 200 pounds, a goal weight of 120 pounds isn't really achievable, or it may be achievable but is not healthy. There's a lot to consider. R for relevant. In this step, just evaluate why these goals matter to you. I use the weight loss goal because so many of us have wanted to lose weight at some point in our lives, but when you're looking at relevancy, why do you wanna lose weight? What is motivating you to lose weight? One thing, don't ever make your goals based on what other people tell you that you need. So make sure they align with your other potential goals that you have and your abilities and your beliefs and values. T for timely or time bound. When you set a strong goal, there's a deadline. Without this, you're not gonna stay on track or within your time frame. If I say, I wanna be 120 pounds by December 31st, that gives me a deadline. But note that it's super unrealistic and unhealthy to make a goal within like, I wanna lose 15 pounds in the next two weeks. I have a wedding to go to this weekend, so I wanna lose 10 pounds to look good in my dress. I don't know, whatever, we've all heard it. So, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. That is a very, very brief explanation of SMART goals. And I want you to keep this in mind for section two, where we will be referring to it. So I will see you there. All right, the bulk of it. I will be using a goals worksheet that I created. I use this with my clients and I have a black and white printed one here, but I will probably put up my color one on the page, on the page, on the screen. It's called my health goals, but it doesn't have to be specifically around health. We only wanna focus on like the way that I set it up. So if you use this, maybe change it up a little bit to whatever suits your needs. These can be like your school goals, your life goals, your professional goals, whatever. And then we also could ignore the name and the date on the very top. <laughs> So I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna complete one, a little fake one with you. That way you can get in a better idea of how to fill it out yourself. So all right, let's get into the first section. Section one, the big picture. This is where you write down all of your ideas to give you somewhere to start. 
be broad and write down whatever comes to mind, whether or not it makes sense. So if you're talking about health goals, you may say something like, I wanna eat better, I wanna start working out. Professional goals may look like, I wanna be a counselor, I want to go to law school, or I wanna start my own business. And then you can even approach it with like personal goals that you have too. Those could be, I wanna be more productive, I want to be successful. And this is the only section that you can be broad in, so take advantage of it. Let's say that your big picture goal is that you wanna be more productive during the day. Just think of the big picture as like the umbrella of all of the little goals. Section two, goal specific. So like I said before, we are gonna be referring back to the SMART goals. And in this section, goal specific, that's when you use them. Your big picture goal was, I wanna be more productive. Okay, so break that down a little bit more by using SMART. Let's say your new specific goal is, I will go to the gym before 9 a.m. at least two times a week for one month. Okay, let's look at it. It's specific. You're actually saying that you're going to be going to the gym by a certain time, for however many days of the week for your deadline. It's measurable because when you look back after the month and you say, okay, how many days did I actually go each week? Did I complete that goal? And it is achievable because when you look back on it, if you said, I'm gonna go to the gym every morning before 9 a.m. for seven days a week for one whole month, that's not very realistic, especially if you're not somebody who started working out, who started working out, who has been working out. And I would assume that it's relevant to you because health, why not? And it's timely, you do have your deadline. After one month, you are going to look back and evaluate whether or not you achieved that goal. So my three specific goals for productivity could include going to the gym before 9 a.m. at least twice a week for one month, finishing at least three different work tasks every day for one week, cooking meals at home for at least three days of the week for one month. I think those seem doable, right? So it's all about how you see it too. And in the long run, you're gonna be like, I actually was more productive than I was in the past. This is progress. Progress over perfection. Section three, potential pitfalls. So now you need to take a step back and evaluate your environment and your current situation. So ask yourself, what stands in the way between me and my goals? This could be so many things. If you're talking about school, maybe you don't have the funds. Transportation to and from places. Um, technology, maybe you don't have all of the equipment that you need for school because online classes really just popped out of nowhere. So maybe you don't have a laptop, maybe you don't have a webcam, maybe you don't have a smartphone, whatever it is. Think about those things that are gonna potentially hold you back. If it's something with the gym, think about even like any kind of medical issue that you may have. Do you have a gym near you? Evaluate what you're able to do, things that are out of your control, and consider them pitfalls. Section four, steps to achieve the goal or goals. So on the back of this worksheet is a little section called keys to success. So in section two, I had you write three specific goals. And if you wrote more, that's totally fine. Those goals are now correlated to the information on the back of the page, the key to success page. My three specific steps to achieve the goal of going to the gym every morning before 9 a.m. would be setting an alarm to wake me up on time, preparing my gym bag the night before, because I don't know about you, but if I wake up and I don't even have my outfit picked out and like nothing is prepared, I just like, I don't even want to deal with it. So I just don't. <laughs> So preparing my gym bag the night before and sleeping early the night before my, I know I'm working out because then I'm gonna make sure that I am well rested. So those are very specific steps to take to achieve that goal. What was my second one? <laughs> Finishing at least three different work tasks. You can say, I will silence my phone during my work hours. Every morning or the night before, I'll write a checklist of all the tasks that need to be done during that day. And I'll limit my social media use to avoid distraction. Looking at our final goal, I will cook meals at least three days of the week for one month. Oh, I had to read that one. I couldn't, I really couldn't think of anything more than just two. I will grocery shop for the whole week on Sunday. And I will pre-plan which meals I wanna cook. Don't know about you, but every time I wanna try something new, I. I go to Pinterest. <laughs> and there you have it. So yeah, that's today's video. The best thing about the layout of this worksheet is that it's always ongoing, if that makes sense. You can use this for any goal, regardless of what it is and what area in your life it's about. And you can use it for multiple goals at a time. And when you're completing a goal, like grad school or productivity or for the gym, you can always go back and reevaluate. Maybe I wanna challenge myself a little bit more. Or if you've already completed everything, you can go back and dig a little bit deeper into the new goals that you have. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Goal setting does not have to be difficult and it does not have to be overwhelming. Just take it step by step. And my biggest piece of advice too for goals is to be very open to change. That maybe your goal will change as you go on or maybe things just didn't work out as the way, in the way that you wanted it to. But no matter what, 
just trust the process. Feel free to subscribe. If not, feel free to follow me on Instagram. My handle is Intricate. Don't forget to follow the Strictly series on Instagram. I will leave all of their information down below too. Let me know if you listen to them. Let me know how you like it. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next one. Thank you, bye.